Hello everyone, AJ Ryzik here, and today we're looking at Voyager X2 and X8. Now these two distributions from Voyager are nearly identical, the difference being X2 is based on Zubuntu 14.04, X8 is based on Debian 8. Now looking at how the desktop is set up, you wouldn't know which is which, and the differences between the two are so minor, I felt there's no point in making two separate videos. Now, like many distributions, both X2 and X8 use XFCE. In this case, both are using 14.12 for the desktop environment. Uh, however, there's no ordinary XFCE desktop. It's been tweaked like none other. So let's start the review by taking a walkthrough of how this desktop is laid out. So looking at our top panel, you can see we've got all kinds of stuff loaded down on this panel. So let's start over on the left-hand side. We've got the whisker menu right here, which I think is by far the best menu in, uh, in XFCE. You know, you can do a search, you know, by typing, or you can use the categorized menu. We've got an area over here where you can store favorites for, for quickly launching those favorites. Down at the bottom, you've got a quick link to uh, your settings. Uh, locking the screen and then also for for logging out powering off that kind of thing so excellent menu right next to that you can see when you hover over that star you get it just says slash home if you click on that it'll allow you to um, go to various folders um, think of it like the places menu that you that you've seen on uh, on the traditional gnome desktop uh, and then right next to that, we have a launcher for the Slings Cold launcher. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it, it's, it's pretty interesting. It gives you kind of a, um, uh, I don't know, I guess it's, it's similar to the, uh, to the launcher used on GNOME 3 these days. So you click on that, and it'll go full screen. And you can, you know, you've got a keyboard search up here, so you can look for an application from here. So, Libre, off, and, you know, boom, it'll search there. Uh, you can see that you can categorize your search. Um, and once again, full screen. A lot of people like the full screen uh, launchers. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of those uh, whatever works for you, I guess. Um, then right next to that, we've got our working icon or our our running uh, our running windows, and then a nice big open space, and then this little arrow right here that will give you a drop down terminal. Very nice. And then next to that, we have another search engine here. Now this one will find basically anything you're looking for, not just applications but uh, files as well. Um, this application is called Synapse, and you can search for, you know, files or, you know, videos, whatever it is that you're looking for. So let's start looking for LibreOffice, and boom, it pulls it up. And if you use your down arrow key, um, you know, it'll give you a list of different options, and you can scroll through those and that sort of thing. And you can set this up like you see right now. It's it's searching through everything. Maybe you only want to look for through documents. Click on documents, search just the documents, only audio files, only applications, however you want to go about that. So pretty cool application there. Uh, then right next to that, we have a quick link to our backup tool. So if you want to go and back up your system, go right ahead and do that. Then we've got our tray. You can see that the little red dot right here, that's for my simple screen recorder. And then this is for internet radio. Um, very nice that they've already got all this set up for you. And then, of course, our Bluetooth indicator, our internet indicator, our sound slash volume control, and battery, uh, time slash date slash calendar. Then we've got our workspaces indicator right there. And then we've got an indicate, indicated, yeah, uh, integrated. Uh, weather app right there and you can see what the weather is in Cincinnati right now um, rain and 58 degrees and then we've got our session control you can click on that and you know power off and all that kind of stuff and then our language and then finally way over here uh, personal 
and this is kind of interesting you click on that and it quickly opens up a calculator for you the California um, uh, uh, calendar and then also this little notepad so pretty cool with all that across the bottom of the screen you can see that we have a dock here and they're using plank as their dock very nice dock uh, doesn't use too many resources fairly fairly light on the on the CPU memory use all that kind of stuff um, and uh, you know still is fairly configurable um, not a whole lot else to say about that um, let me go and let me move the cheese webcam out of the way and uh, looking at our desktop here we've got two conkeys there's one right over here and then um, one that is you, know, you see where my mouse is right over here this one right here uh, it shows what workspace you're currently on so you know we've got four workplaces set up uh, by default uh, it's showing you which one you're on here over here on this other conky we've got the time the date and then underneath it it's kind of hard to see because of the background right now but it's got some data on our system so let's go and change the background to something that makes that conky a little more visible so let's go to desktop settings and we will pick out a different background now while I'm talking about back backgrounds you can see from Go and I'll enlarge this a little bit. We have a ton of backgrounds available. They have really pulled out all the stops as far as giving you lots and lots of backgrounds. Um, of course, you can still go and add, you know, something personal, a, a, photo, a home photo or a solid color or whatever. But um, you can see they've got tons and tons of backgrounds that they have available uh, pre-installed for you that's pretty cool and it's nice and dark so you can actually see the conky now so anyway like I said we've got uh, we've got time and date um, RAM usage uh, hard disk space um, CPU usage all that kind of stuff in our conky so one more launcher that I want to show you and um, it's over here on the right hand side uh, if you just bring your mouse over the left hand side and hover it'll you know this, this little menu or quick launch whatever you want to call it will pop up now uh, one issue I ran into that with ran into with the with this launcher is that it doesn't play nice with multiple monitors if you got uh, two or more monitors set up side by side you cannot open this launcher now if you stack them you know one on one monitor on top of the other it will work but then it throws off where plank ends up and where the and where the panel ends up so just so I could do this video I shut off the multiple monitors but um, you know it'd really be nice if, if that issue could be resolved but anyway um, up here at the top we've got launchers for our various uh, uh, not really launchers but I, I guess you consider it a, uh, a a workspace switcher so you can switch between the various workspaces and then you got some various terminal based tools um, you got basically a, a terminal based file manager uh, for music an equalizer um, launcher for Kodi media player um, just all kinds of stuff over here um, so really nice that to, that that they've got this launcher included um, but kind of backing up and kind of looking at the desktop as a whole we've got so many launchers and searchers it's like um, you know it's almost overwhelming you know I I can I can understand okay you've got the menu based um, launcher and uh, and you also have a dock at the bottom and you use the dock for quick launches okay I can I can understand that that kind of thing having two um, but you know we've got the menu we've got the dock we've got the slings cold we've got uh, the synapse search over here and now we've got this this terminal baser I mean there's it's just kind of over overwhelming why you know and why do you need that many launchers um, and I mean every it, it all works I just I, I really don't get why you need that many launchers 
So let's take a look at the software that's included by default. Now, there are a few minor differences between X2 and X8. Um, X2 is what I'm running right now to do this video. It is the Zubuntu version. Um, like I said, very minor differences, and I'll point those out as I go through uh, the software. So we've got, let's go to uh, start with our accessories. And we've got... Uh, we got caffeine, so uh, caffeine will keep your desktop awake for like if you're watching a video or whatever. You don't want it going to sleep when you're watching a movie or whatnot. So caffeine will prevent that from happening. We've got the catfish file search, a calculator. ClamTK is a Linux-based virus scanner. Uh, we've got our file manager, Thunar. Excellent, excellent file manager. Um, Mousepad for our text editing needs. We've got our note-taking app. Uh, let's see, we already talked about Plank. We've got screenlets. This is kind of interesting. Um, not a whole, I, I found this kind of, I don't know, not a whole lot of point to it, but you can go and add these various screenlets to your screen. Like let's, uh, let's go and we'll add this Linux one here and you get the little tux indicator and you can resize it. Uh, let's double the size. There we go. So, that's interesting, but uh, it's kind of like, nah, so what, that kind of thing. Uh, but, hey, you know, if these these are your thing, cool. Ah, I keep I keep hitting the, uh, the workspace switcher there. Anyway, where was I at? Uh, yeah. Okay, we've got screenless, we've got our screenshot tool. Sling's cold, we talked about that. We also talked about Synapse, we've got our terminal, um, USB image writer, XF burn for CD burning, and let's see, under games. Got a couple of games added. What I've kind of found was interesting with all the software that's been added to this distro, um, they didn't have Steam added by default. Not that that's a big deal, I just, uh, you know, I was kind of expecting to to see steam installed uh, uh, you know from the factory so to speak uh, under graphics we got GIMP we've got G thumb for our uh, photo photo needs uh, LibreOffice draw our image viewer and our simple scan tool under internet here is where you will see a little bit of a difference uh, and that is in here in the Zubuntu based version we've got Firefox and Thunderbird and on the Debian based version, you have Ice Weasel and Ice Dove. Now, essentially, it's the same program. Uh, there was a rebranding for versions used on Debian based on you know Debian's uh, uh, branding requirements. Um, but essentially, they're the same program. But I did want to point out the differences there. Uh, we've got Birdie, which is a desktop Twitter client transmission for BitTorrent needs, and then XJet IRC. Uh, under multimedia, uh, Cheese is installed by default. I did add a uh, simple screen recorder, which is what I typically use for recording my videos, although they do have Kazam installed by default. It's a fine screen recorder. It's just that I use simple screen recorder all the time. It's what I'm used to. Um, you know, uh, might as well use what 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 I like to use, you know, that sort of thing. Clementine for our music needs. We also have Cody Media Center installed by default. Um, and we got a bunch of media players here. We got So we got Cody installed. We've got Parole Media Player. Um, we've got VLC. Um, so lots of media players here. Um, and we've got our Pulse Audio uh, volume control and equalizer. We've got the radio tray. Um, already talked about XF burn this YouTube browser was kind of interesting I played around with it a bit and I found it didn't always work the way it should um, I would pick a video that I wanted to watch it would launch in VLC and sometimes I just get an error message and sometimes the video would work I don't know if it had something to do with how it um, you know, copyright or how things were coded on YouTube or I, I don't know, but it seemed kind of random as what video works and, and what videos didn't work. 
uh, under Office, we have the LibreOffice uh, Office Suite. Um, got both the orange calendar, which comes by default with uh, XFCE, and then also I talked about the calendar the California calendar earlier. Now that was developed by Yorba, which is the same people responsible for Shotwell and for Geary. And uh, for those that have been paying attention to the news, Yorba is no longer with us, I guess you could say. Um, I did read an announcement that uh, the elementary OS team is going to continue the development of Geary. I don't know about California and Shotwell though. Um, Having said that, this version of California here, it is version, uh, let's see if I can find here. Uh, I don't remember how to, how to pull up the about on this one, but, oh, maybe it's under there. No. Anyway, it's an older version of California. Uh, so if you're using it just as a standalone calendar, fine. And no problems if you are trying to sync with Google Calendar I've I found and, and it's been all over the internet that this version of California does not sync well with uh, Google Calendar It's kind of a hit or miss thing so you know if, if you're someone that that's really looking for that synchronization um, you know probably your best bet is to install Chrome and use the Sunrise Calendar uh, where were we at? Okay. Oh, let's move on to settings. Most of the setting stuff is, um, you know, pretty typical, the, the usual XFCE and that sort of thing. I've got the AMD Catalyst uh, Control Center here because I have an AMD card. Uh, most of all that is the same. Now, one thing that is interesting here, and let me find it. You ever notice you can't find stuff when you're looking for it? There it is, KWIN. Now, why is KWIN on here? It is because you can switch between the default window manager of XFCE to the KWIN window manager, which is what is used in um, Kubuntu and all those KDE distros. And to do the switch, all you do, you do a right click and just click on switch KWIN and you can switch between the two managers. I've got this running on KWIN right now and it allows you to get all the desktop effects that you have available in in um, KDE. Um, so you can see all the different uh, all the different effects here. You can go and tweak them to your heart's content. You can do the desktop cube, um, all that kind of stuff. Go online, find new effects. Very nice. Um, also play around with your task switcher, your virtual virtual desktops, how you want the screen edges to behave. Also window decoration. So you can go and do some uh, some KDE based theming. You know, if uh, you don't like the, the current theming and want to pull down something, um, you know, if there's a KDE theme that you like, go and select that. Uh, let's pick that one right there. Boom, there's our new theme. Uh, nice and easy to do that. Want to make it look like KDE? You know, boom! There, that gives you the uh, the whole oxygen theme with the 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 bluish halo around it. Um, there's the QT curve. Um, but let's for now, we'll just go back to the Voyager. And then also, you can play around with the um, with the window behavior, all that kind of stuff. So, very interesting. I have I have added KWIN to um, uh, Zubuntu in the past, and then also on uh, you know other XFCE distributions. It's it's stable, no issues with crashing or anything like that. I just have never seen a a distribution that has KWIN installed by default. Um, so uh, you know, very interesting on on uh, like I said, not a bad thing, uh, but uh, like I said, I've never seen that before. Anyway, under under system, we've got uh, Bleach Bit, so you can clean up your desktop. Got Crypt Keeper, GW Package Installer. We've also got Synaptic, and then since we are on the Ubuntu-based version, we have the Ubuntu Software Center. Now, on the Debian-based version, you have um, the the Debian Package Manager. Uh, 
and like I said, you know, so software differences, you get little minor differences there. Um, personally, and for those of you that uh, have seen my previous videos, I've said this time and time again, I'm not a fan of the Ubuntu Software Center because when you want to install multiple packages, it has a tendency to crash and burn on you, freeze up, that kind of thing. If I'm going to install stuff on a Ubuntu-based distro, I am going to use uh, either the terminal or Synaptic Package Manager. To me, they just work so much better. Now, the one nice thing with the Ubuntu Software Center is that you do have access to the reviews and and uh, you know how many star ratings that the various apps have, that sort of thing. So that is good, especially for the new user. Um, but me. I, I know what I'm going to install and download. Other than the few minor software differences that I pointed out, there is one other place that I saw a difference between the Debian version and the uh, and the Zubuntu version, and that came down to speed. Uh, consistently, uh, the Zubuntu-based version was snappier. Um, applications would load quicker. The desktop would load quicker. The desktop would boot quicker. Uh, installing packages that they installed quicker everything was just more snappy much quicker than the Debian based version now I haven't really spent much time with Debian Jesse uh, Debian you know, version 8 so I don't know if if the kind of laggy slowness that I've been seeing is typical of, of this version of Debian uh, and it has been a while since I've used a Debian a, a Debian based uh, distro so um, maybe it's just because I'm used to Ubuntu based um, distros don't know but I will say that there was somewhat of a lag between uh, between the two systems now having said that you know if you're looking at wanting to install either x2 or x8 you know do you want to go with the Ubuntu based or the Debian based and you know, traditionally, uh, the 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 promo of Debian-based distros is, oh, it's going to be rock-solid, stable. Um, you know, it's not the latest packages, but everything very stable. Well, you know, uh, Zubuntu 14.04 has been out for a while, and I would consider it to be rock-solid, stable. So, and, and you know, stability-wise, I really haven't had issues with uh, with this distro either the x2 or the x8 so i can't say oh you know go with the x8 because x2 it's it's unstable no i mean both of them are very stable so stability is not an issue um you know the 1404 based version you've got long-term support for more than three more years um personally i would go with x2 just because of um, how much slower x8 seemed but you know download both and give them a try you know um, no reason not to and uh, that being said I think that about finishes up this review um, as always comments questions all that kind of stuff leave it down below I will get to it as soon as possible and um, you know, I've got some I've got some uh, pretty cool distros in in the works some reviews on those so uh, I'll try to get those out as soon as possible and uh, I hope to see you all on my next distro review thanks a lot <laughs>